over the last two decades. Uh, most of those years have been the hottest ever on, on record. But um, closer to home in the Caribbean, we have early evidence of climate change and the bleaching of coral reefs, which has been quite um, significant and widespread in the, in the Caribbean, in particular the, in particular the 2005 event of coral bleaching, I think is one of the precursors of climate change. So why should people care at all about this? Well, coral reefs, of course, have uh, uh, great value. Uh, we now have uh, valuation studies done by the World Resources Institute for Coral Reefs in the Caribbean and they, they put the annual value at somewhere in the, in the range of you know, one, one to 3.5 billion US dollars a year. The impacts on the coral reef, the, 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 the impact of the warming and the coral bleaching is in fact a, a real indicator of the, the consequences, the, the harbinger of things to come. And what we're looking at um, over the next several decades is a reduction of coral reefs to um, possibly insignificant um, area or complete extinction is really what we're facing. That means that action, the action required is urgent and we should not be you know, um, frustrated that there isn't anything that we can do, that what has been set in motion is really unstoppable. Uh, in a short time frame. We have to consider this as a relay race and if those who are alive now don't take the required action it will be impossible for those who come afterwards to do anything that will make a difference. It will really be too late uh, because of the inertia of the climate system. The experts agree that the world is getting warmer and coral reefs have a battle on their hands. And this battle is made even harder by pollution coming from the land Mud and wastewater running into the sea make it much harder for corals to survive these bleaching events. By keeping our coastal waters clean and healthy, corals will be more able to adapt to higher temperatures and survive the effects of climate change. Well, I think it's, it's very, very important that um, sensible management practices are, are put into place because anything that actually reduces human disturbance on reefs is going to make them better fitted to deal with these stresses. So we need to be talking about adaptation and mitigation. We're not going to be able to stop this in the long term, but if we don't take action, we won't be able to, 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 to reverse it or stabilize it at all. The solutions are really quite simple and affordable. For instance, reforestation and watershed management programs that prevent soil erosion and keep our rivers and coastal waters clean policies and rules to make construction sites more environmentally sensitive, where soil is not left exposed to run off into the sea. Perhaps most importantly, improving the treatment of wastewater and sewage is critical to our reef's health. We can all do our part, and we should lobby for implementation of environmental projects and the enforcement of laws to stop pollution. We have to implement the rules in Tobago because it's my livelihood, not me alone, it's us, my livelihood, we people in Tobago, and we must protect it. There are, of course, contributing factors towards uh, bleaching events. For example, the general health of the reef, which is affected by things like uh, the quality of the water runoff, um, sedimentation due to uh, um, improper planning and cutting of coastal roads. Um, so, of course, we're also talking about uh, coastal erosion. Uh, and also, you know, things uh, such as uh, the, the, the placement of um, large industries and so forth, and how are we going to deal with uh, their um, waste that is being produced. As we know that these sort of um, effects from sewage and sediment pollution um, might actually cause greater di disease problems, particularly in the Caribbean, where these reefs seem to be under much greater stresses. So we export energy and we benefit of, of, of um, the fossil fuel economy, uh, which is producing the major, the major producer of the, the climate warming. 
Um, as a small island, we are also one of the major victims of climate change because we have small land area, we have sea level rise, uh, we have coastal erosion taking place, we have our valued coral reefs being affected. So I think the Trinidad and Tobago has an ethical responsibility to contribute to the solution. critical for our tourism and fishing industries, but it's also about preserving our heritage. It's a moral obligation. It's my life. It's my family's life also too. It's other people's life also too. And this is our tradition who had hand down from our grandfather. Also Mr. Pops just right over there. They was the king of the reef, they was a the fungus. You know? They start taking the family out first, then friends. Then people start paying to one reef now. There is an awakening happening all over the world gradual realization that the health of our planet is under threat from our expanding population and relentless industrialization. Progress has come at a cost, which we may soon have to pay. Looking after the environment is really about maintaining this complex web of life which provides us with food, clean air, clean water and jobs. Looking after the environment is about looking after ourselves. It is something we can do. We just need the will to do it. So we got to take it serious. Our roof in Tobago. This is our paradise.